Starting a business is scary. Business of Architecture, episode 353. Hello, and welcome back, Architect Nation. I'm Enix Sears, and this is the show where you'll discover tips, strategies, and secrets for building an architecture practice that lets you do your best work more often. Today's episode is sponsored by Smart Practice, Business of Architecture step-by-step program for firm owners that helps you structure your practice for creative and financial success, both for you and your team. Discover more by going to businessofarchitecture.com forward slash smart. Today, I speak with architect Mark R. LePage, founder of Entree Architect. Today, we discuss entrepreneurship, especially as it relates to the world of architecture. We also discuss innovation in business, including one trend today that can set you up for success tomorrow. Hello, Mark, and welcome to the Business of Architecture podcast. Enix Sears, it is great to be here. Thank you for inviting me on. And we're so glad to have you because what a better person to have on the podcast to actually talk about entrepreneurship in architecture than the founder of Entree Architect. Yeah, I, I love talking about business and architecture and, and uh, entrepreneurism. So, you know, uh, I'd love to have that conversation with you. And it's pretty fun because our paths are very similar. We got started in the business side of things about the same time. I actually remember, I don't know if I've ever shared this with you, Mark, when I was thinking about the name of the content brand that I was creating, um, you know, brainstorming all sorts of different brands, um, Entrepreneur Architect came to mind. And so I think at that time, you just had a placeholder page. You just kind of had a placeholder page that had a little blog that kind of talked about your your architecture firm. And I thought, dang it, that one's already taken. <laughs> yeah, I, I started a blog in 2007 called Entrepreneur Architect. I actually, I started a blog for my architecture firm in 2006 called Living Well in Westchester. I lived in Westchester, New York at the time, Westchester County. And, uh, and that was, that was focused on my potential clients. And, uh, and I'm a business guy. I enjoy business. And, um, the, uh, the, the, my wife and I are both architects. We launched our firm in 1999 and I started the business side and she focused on the architecture side. And um, I launched that blog, Entrepreneur Architect, in 2007 in order to just capture my own ideas. And, uh, and that, that, as you know, and we launched around the same time. And so it's, uh, uh, there was not much about architecture in business at the time. Yeah. And yeah. so that, and that even- blog very quickly gained an audience. Yeah. Now, even even 2006, going back before that, living well in Westchester. I mean, 2006 that that was that was pretty early for blogs. I mean, that was pretty early in the blogging scene. So I'm curious what what was it that was the impetus for you to start a blog at that time when it was still pretty new? Yeah, it was very early. Um, it it I I'm a business guy. I like reading books about business, and I'm a big Seth Godin fan. Um, and so I I read Seth Godin's blog because he was already blogging at that time. Um, I followed other blogs and uh, I just, I always wanted to sort of try the next thing and blogging. I like to write. I'd like to connect with other people. Um, I was looking for ways to sort of um, uh, get my message out in a unique way. Um, And I also knew, I also had a, a, a website very early, you know, at, we, we launched the firm in 99. The website was actually built right around the same time. Um, and at that time, architects were questioning whether they even needed a website. I would go to the AIA meetings and say, hey, you need a website. And they'd be like, what do you need a website for? And so, yeah. and, and so we built the firm on that blog and that, and that website um, because there was nobody else there doing it. And so it was a great way to sort of um, – uh, very quickly get noticed because people were using the internet to search for things they were looking to do. And so when they were looking for architects, they were looking on the internet at that time. Yeah. Sort of kind of reminds me of, I've always thought, you know, back in the seventies, if I would have known that Apple was going to be a good stock or back in the sixties, if I would have picked up some IBM stock, you know, my goodness. So you kind of start at the right time to catch that wave. Of course, the question always is, what's the wave today? So Mark, if you're, if you're looking at, you were kind of an early adopter of blogging and of websites, as you mentioned for architects, do you see anything today that you would, you would say, this is, this is kind of that thing? Yeah, we're doing it. We're doing it right now. 
Yeah. So tell uh, us about it. Pod- podcasting is that thing. It, it, um, I started the Entree Architect podcast in 2012, the same day that I launched EntreeArchitect.com. Um, it went from a personal blog to a platform on December 12, 2012. I called it my 12, 12, 12 project. Um, wrote it on, wrote a blog post saying I'm going to do something that's going to, uh, uh, change my life and try to change the world. And I invited my readers to do something similar. And, and that was the launch of Entree Architect dot com and the entree architect podcast and the podcast has become such a powerful thing for for entree architect but for me too it it has um, introduced me to so many different people and has given me a platform to be able to talk about the things that i want to talk about uh, and meet so many amazingly interesting people and uh and podcasting now has been around for a little while uh but i think we're still very very early and in architecture and engineering and construction uh, we are right at the, and you and I have, have, we are a decade ahead of everybody else. Um, people are just starting to start podcasting. And so uh, podcasting is that wave. It's, it has started and it is only going to grow. Um, when you look at the big companies, the big media companies, audio is where they're going. You look at Spotify and what they're doing. Um, you look at Apple and what they're doing. I mean, you look at these big, big, these big deals that they're having with podcasting companies, $250 million for certain companies, $40 million for other companies, um, just to gain an edge on podcasting. And so podcasting is absolutely a wave and, uh, and will continue to grow and grow and grow. And you've actually started with some, with some colleagues, uh, a, a business venture in that space. Could you tell us about that, Mark? Sure. The, well, I, I mentioned that Entree Architect has grown and, uh, and has become pretty successful. It's, it's, it's the way most people find Entree Architect. They find the podcast first, and then once they find the podcast, they, they see all of the other things that we're doing. Um, in uh, last year, January of – actually, January of this year, um, well, actually, it, it started at the convention, at the AIA convention in Las Vegas. So not this past year that was skipped, but the year before that, um, I had a meeting with my friend Demetrius Lynch, who is the host of Spaces Podcast, another great show. And um, and he and I just had breakfast one morning and we were talking about our dreams and what we want to do and the things that we want to do in terms of um, having impact in the world through architecture. And we are very much aligned with what we want our big picture to look like, the things that we want to accomplish before we're you know, move on in our life um, are very similar and very aligned. And um, he's a post- podcaster as well. I'm a podcaster as well. And um, in January, I decided to hire Demetrius to be my creative director at Entree Architect. And that um, turned into a, a, um, uh, a development of the Build Your Brand podcast, which is a new podcast that we started in, in March. Uh, a second Entree Architect podcast. It's hosted by Jeff Eccles, who is an architect and marketing expert. And um, that's about branding. And I um, hired Demetrius and Jeff to go build that and sort of stayed out of it. I said, you guys know what you're doing. Go build a podcast. And they did. And it, and it came out really, really well. And through that success of that show, Demetrius and, Demetrius and I continued to talk and said, we really ought to build out this into a bigger thing. This should be um, uh, a, a platform where the, the leaders of the AEC industry, people who already have platforms but don't have podcasts, can come and develop podcasts. And so we did that. And so in, in January, we launched Build Your Brand. Well, March, we build, uh, launched Build Your Brand. Uh, soon after that, we decided to actually become co-founders and spin it from Entree Architect. Entree Architect is still a separate company. Gable Media Incorporated is now a separate company. And uh, Demetrius and, and I are partners. And um, and we're building a network. And so we invited the guys from our Arca Speak podcast to join us. And we brought spaces into the network and Entree Architect and Build Your Brand. Um, and then I also reached out to Evan Troxel, who is one of the co-hosts of Arca Speak. Uh, he and I have always been talking. We're good friends, and and he's always wanted to have his own show to talk about the future of architecture and technology and how technology will affect and impact 
the profession. And so I reached out to him and said, it's time to do it. <laughs> and so he, uh, he agreed and we, we helped him build Troxel, T-R-X-L. Um, and it's a great podcast. It's sort of a long format uh, discussion. He invites people in technology who, who are impacting the, the profession um, and will definitely impact the future of our profession. And he takes them on this long winding road of a conversation and talks about all kinds of things and it's super interesting conversations. Um, and so we built that. That's, that's um, the fifth show. And then the sixth show, um, I reached out to uh, another friend, Evelyn Lee, uh, who is the creator of Practice of Architecture um, platform, uh, practiceofarchitecture.com. And um, she too, and, and she and I have been talking about trying to build a podcast for her. And uh, this gave us an opportunity to do that. And we, we, um, she partnered up with Janine um, Chastain, who is another marketing, trained as an architect, uh, marketing consultant. And just uh, similar to to uh, Evelyn, and they do a show called Practice Disrupted that is talking about how do we take the profession and push it past where we are today? How do we look at what the definition of architecture is and what we do as architects um, and shake it up a little bit? How do we do things beyond the traditional practice of architecture? Uh, and that's those are the conversations they're having at Practice Disrupted. And so yeah. that's the idea is to sort of is is to provide a place where um, we can help leaders in our industry uh, expand their platforms, expand their message through audio, um, give them a platform to do it through a network uh, and provide the services for them to be able to to leverage that uh, knowledge into an audio format. That's great. That's great. So podcasting, we're kind of talking about podcasting now and it being maybe the blogging of 2006, this, this content sea of content and information. Are podcasts, are they right for architecture firms? Oh yeah, sure. I, I think that podcasts can be done by anybody. It, there's three components to a successful podcast. In my opinion, it ha it must be informative right? You, you should be able to learn something from it. Um, they, they should be entertaining, right? It shouldn't just be information because if it's yep. just information and it's not entertaining, it's not very interesting. So people won't come back. Um, and I believe that the third piece is quality. I think it needs to be a, a quality audio. It needs to be, um, it can't be distracting, right? And it, it, it often you'll hear a podcast that is, potentially entertaining and informative, but it's terrible audio and you just can't listen to it. It's annoying. Um, and so people don't come back. And so I think if you have those three pieces, um, you can do a podcast about anything because there's an audience out there for everybody. And so if an architecture firm wanted to start a podcast, um, that's absolutely something that I believe is, would be successful. Um, you just need to focus on the audience. You need to understand who your, your audience is. Um, and create content that will uh, attract that audience. And if you do that consistently over time, which is the hardest part, as you know, Enoch, uh, to, to consistently create content uh, week in, week out, without stopping, and always, always be there when they go to listen, um, it will grow. It will continue to grow. And, and uh, today I have 300 and I, next episode will be 350 episodes of the Entre Architect podcast. 350 yeah, it's incredible. Incredible. Now, a lot of architects may think maybe that's I can never do that. That would that would take too much time. What would be in it for for an architect or an architecture firm to have a podcast? Let's say beyond the creative expression, they definitely get that. Yeah, well, your your clients as an architect, um they are they have interests, right? And so whether it's it's the type of work that you do or uh, just uh, talking about the the um, the interests of the client base that you have right? so if you have an ideal client that ideal client um, has has similar interests to all the other ideal clients that your firm is attracting and so whether it is specifically talking about your projects and how you do your projects or whether it's a con it, the, the topics of other things that you're um, potential uh, customers and clients would be interested in listening to, 
Uh, and then your, you know, it's the fact that you're presenting it almost like a sponsor, right? It would be your show as a, as an architect. Um, but maybe you're talking about gardening, right? Because maybe your audience is, a, you have a residential architecture firm and your ideal clients, many of them are, you know, homeowners who have uh, gardens and, and they create their own food and their own vegetables. And so it would not be out of uh, the realm of, of possibility to create a podcast about home gardening, but you would own it as the architecture firm and the architecture firm would, could be mentioned that, you know, it's, it's a podcast by your architecture firm, or maybe it's presented in a way where you're a sponsor of the show. So it almost just looks like it's a show about gardening, but you're the sponsor. Um, and so there's lots of different ways to be able to leverage audio, um, uh, you know, for an architecture firm. Fantastic ideas. Now, one of the reasons we were talking about this before we started recording, Mark, one of the reasons that uh, your post caught my eye, you were saying something about entrepreneurship. And I saw a post that I thought, you know what, I should really have Mark on to talk about entrepreneurship. For you, first of all, what what is entrepreneurship? <laughs> That's a very interesting question. I believe all small firm architects who own their own firms are entrepreneurs. Um, I believe that if you are starting a business and you are taking the risk in order to um, gain something, right? It might be, it might be money. It might be flexibility. It might be freedom. It might be impact you want in the world. Um, But if you are, uh, if you are investing in your business, both time and money, um, with the idea that that you want to accomplish one of those pieces or or something else, um, then you're an entrepreneur, and uh, and I believe that that every entrepreneur, architect, every architect that is starting their own firm from scratch is an entrepreneur architect, and so that's that's how I look at entrepreneurism and architects. Great, great answer, great definition. And what would you say in a broader context? What are the keys? of successful entrepreneurship. We, we kind of chatted how you've started several successful businesses for you. What would those keys be? Well, I think for, for an, let's focus on an architect. So if it's an architect that's starting a business and the, the things that are, that are key to a successful business are the fundamentals. And I think that because we're architects and we're trained in architecture school, most architecture schools don't focus on entrepreneurism or business other than a professional practice um, uh, course that, very rarely actually talks about the fundamentals of business. Um, those fundamentals are the things that will break or make you. Uh, those are the things that will allow you to pursue the dream that you have as an architect. Um, you can design great architecture. Um, you can serve your clients really well, but if you don't have all those other things like financial management and a, a um, business development system, a marketing system, a sales system uh, that you are selling, which a lot of architects don't like to do. Um, if you I mean, don't, that's, that's a tough sell right there, Mark. <laughs> yeah. If you honest. don't, if you don't understand those fundamentals, you're not going to succeed because those are fundamentals in order for you to have a successful business. You are a success. You are a business like any other business. You're a business just like the, 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 the delicatessen down the street. Um, the same as a restaurant or the same as the dry cleaner. Same fundamentals. You need to make. You need to understand how to attract your clients. You need to understand how to convert those clients into customers. You need to be able to understand how the money comes into your firm, what you do with that money, and how that money goes out of your firm, and to make sure that when that all happens, there's a profit at the end of the day, so you can continue to do what you want to do. And if you don't understand, you don't need to the 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 you know, the super advanced version of all those things, you just need the fundamentals. And so um, that would be my, my suggestion. That's the key to a successful architecture firm is understanding those uh, individual fundamentals of business and, uh, and under- yeah. really understanding them, embracing them and, and building systems around them and, uh, and leveraging those systems for success. Mm. You know, Mark, that, it's funny you say that. Uh, we find a lot in our work with firms that there's there's a lot of pushback in terms of my this isn't a business. It's not my my architecture firm isn't a business. I mean, it's different. Architecture is different. You got to do things differently. I mean, do you ever get that that kind of pushback from our colleagues and our peers? Um, I used to. 
I think that that entree architect has become something way beyond me. I think it has become a a, a community of people and a, and a culture um, that has learned over the time, whether it's through me, through the podcast and the and the materials and the resources that I've I've created with my team, um, or whether it's just a shift in the industry, right? Because I think the next generation is coming into architecture with some of that um, business uh, knowledge and entrepreneur spirit naturally because they've, they've been brought up on the internet and the internet highlights those things. Um, and so it, I think it's shifting in our profession at, as small firms, you know, we, I'm solely focused on sole practitioners and small firms. And so I believe that, 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 uh, is shifting. When I first started Entrepreneur Architect, it was something that was a very difficult sell. People did not believe that they needed to run their firms like like a business, like the delicatessen down the street. They didn't believe it. Um, but I think that there's been a, there's been enough uh, influence from Entrez Architect and the business of architecture and many of the others who are doing similar things that we are doing. Um, we are making a difference. I think that the way people look at their firms is very, very different today. The majority of architects who are running small firms um, are looking at their businesses very differently today than they were in, in 2006 when I started the blog um, or 2007 when I started the Entrepreneur Architect blog. Um, and so, yes, I think there's still some pushback that they don't want to be salespeople, right? They don't want to be that sleazy car salesman. Um, but if if they are if they become the sleazy car salesman, they're not doing it right, right? That that yeah. you don't need to be a pushy salesman in order to sell. You should be a guide. You should you should be um, uh, a service, right? You're providing a service to your customers, and um, and and specifically in architecture, when architecture client comes to an architect. They are already, they're already sold. They want to do a project. That's why they're looking for you. And so they're already sold. It's just a matter of picking the firm that they're going to work with. And, um, and so it's just a matter of identifying the ideal client for your firm, making sure that that ideal client is right for your firm and your firm is right for their, their, that client and to be able to uh, communicate that very clearly without any you know, um, uh, uh, inconsistency that when that resonates, when, when the architect and the customer resonate, that when they find each other, they're like, Oh, that's exactly what I want. Um, that's your sale, right? You, you've, you've made the sale at that point. Now all you need to do is go through the process of, uh, converting them into a customer, but they've already made the decision to work with you once they, once they have that feeling, um, and it's just a matter of, of going through the next process of getting them signed up. Yeah. In all the firms you work with and the firms you've seen, and you've worked with a lot through the Entree Architect platform and have a lot of people in that platform as well. If you had to pick out just one key characteristic of success, now let's define success as people who, you know, not only are fulfilled in the work they're doing, but actually financially, financially really, really making it. Is there, is there one, one characteristic, one attribute, one skill set, one knowledge that kind of s- stands out for you? Yeah. They've okay. overcome they've overcome fear. That's that's the that is the thing that stands in the most in the way of most successful architects. Is is yeah, the, tell me about that. What what do you mean by that, Mark? That's interesting. Yeah. Because Great running comment. a bu- running a business is scary. Starting a business yeah. is scary. Um doing the things that need to be done to be successful is scary. Uh, sending an invoice to a client, that's really the right invoice. It's the, it's the money that you really earned. That's scary. So there's lots of fears that get in our way. Launching the firm from day one, launching Entree Architect for me was really scary, right? I thought about it for years, five or six years I thought about doing it before I finally did it. Um, and so it's that, it's that overcoming the fears uh, uh, that, that are the, are the things that make people most successful. Hiring that first employee, when you know you need that first employee, the only thing stopping you from hiring that employee is the fear of not knowing 
what it's going to be like to hire that employee, right? With, am I going to be able to pay that, that employee? Am I going to be able to have enough work for that employer employee to do? Should I hire the employee or should I do 1099 and have an independent contractor? Though that's all fear that stops you from doing that. And anybody who does it and hires that first employee um, never regrets it. Well, some do because because maybe <laughs> maybe some maybe some didn't do what they needed to do uh, prior to to hiring that that person. But the vast majority, well, the the successful architects. To go back to your question, the successful architects have have overcome that fear of hiring that person, and once they've overcome it, they have the confidence to do it again. And then they have the confidence to do it again and again and again, and they grow. When they need another person, it's no longer a fear. They just say, okay, well, how do I make sure that that person's going to be successful when they come into my firm? Um, so I think that's the first thing is, is overcoming fear, recognizing the fear and finding ways to overcome that fear. And then I think the other piece that I find that, that, um, that makes for successful architects and successful business people in general are the people who are innovative people who are pushing the limits a little bit, who are willing to go a little bit beyond what uh, is the norm, uh, especially in architecture. And, and as a profession, if we talk about the profession uh, as at large, the full profession, if the profession does not start innovating and start, start um, embracing the technology and the future of what's coming our way, talk about a wave, we're going to become obsolete. Right, architects will go away because technology will go will replace them. Um, other industries are sitting there waiting to replace them. Developers are waiting to replace them. Technology companies are waiting to replace them. Um, it's not inevitable, right? It, it's something that we have control over, right? We either embrace that future and become the leaders of that future, or we go away. Uh, the profession is not guaranteed as we grow. Yeah, yeah. Well said. Mark, where do people go to find out more about what you're up to? EntreeArchitect.com. Uh, for, the, for the community and the training, EntreeArchitect.com. Uh, for podcasting and the things that we're doing over Gable Media is GableMedia.com. It's G-A-B-L Media.com. All right. Thanks, Mark, for joining us here on The Business of Architecture. It's been an honor, Enoch. Thank you for inviting me and, uh, and having a good conversation with me. And that's a wrap. If you enjoyed today's show, please head on over to iTunes and leave us a review. I read every single one. Also, I'd love to get your feedback on this particular episode or the show in general, as well as your recommendations. You can reach us by emailing podcast at businessofarchitecture.com. This podcast is brought to you by Business of Architecture a leading architect business consultancy. Access our free training on how to structure your architecture firm for more freedom, fulfillment, and financial success by going to smartpracticemethod.com. The views expressed on this show by my guests do not represent those of the host, and I make no representation, promise, guarantee, warranty, pledge, contract, bond, or commitment except to help you conquer the world. Carpe diem.